No, I uh, I had to, to go grab a, a bottle of water really quick, but I thought I would also grab uh, some syringes here. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm waving around syringes. <laughs> and I, I may or may not have a bag full of many different kinds of peptides. I have some here, a Batalent. I was going to inject some uh, 141 because I haven't done that yet today. Don't worry, listeners. It does not take effect. Actually, I have some melanotan. I haven't done that in a while. It does not take effect right away. In fact, it's several hours. Um, and I was going to ask you because it might happen. Sometimes if I do PT-141, I'm opening the syringes right now, um, or if I do melanotan, I get really hot. I don't get nauseous usually unless I do a big dose, right. but I get like flushed. Like, like my, my yes. face turns red and I'm kind of like sweaty. What's yes. going on with that? I think that's just a local histamine um, reaction. It happens with the growth hormone secretagogues too. And it's usually, again, 10, 15 minutes and then it goes away. But it can, okay. it can be, um, it, you can get quite hot. So a little bit of Benadryl would fix that if it bothered me. It, it usually does. Yeah. Right. I have a Benadryl. vial of a certain compound here. Uh, and this is PT-141. I'm not going to be promoting any one supplier over the other because, well, you got to do your own vetting and work with your doctors and stuff like that. So now I'm drawing up a little bit. I didn't, wasn't planning on doing this, but you just inspired me. So, <laughs> well, I'm happy draw, with an inspiration. <laughs> drawing up a little bit of melanotan here, just into the vial. And I know how much water I put in this. So this is about the right dose for me. And now I'm gonna do something really cool. I'm gonna use this uh, paper towel soaked in alcohol. It's like a little wipey that a proper doctor would use, but I'm a biohacker, so I can use a paper towel with alcohol in it because the <laughs> difference is, there's no difference. <laughs> Am I right? You're right. Okay, and I'm gonna do it on the back of my arm here. By the way, look at those guns. I did a, a thing on electrical stimulation yesterday. We shocked the crap out of my biceps for two minutes and oh my God, they hurt today. So now I'm looking all well-defined, but don't worry, it's all fake. And I'm going to stick the needle in here and stick. it sounds, sounds really bad, but it simply doesn't hurt to put a needle in. How's my technique? You can't even tell because I'm off the camera. But, I, I think you're looking very good. You want to make sure that it's at a direct uh, purpose. Oh, you like it going needle. straight in? Yeah, you put it straight in. Otherwise, sometimes if you don't, the needle is so small that you can end up with a dermal injection rather than subcutaneous. And that can cause itching and irritation. But I thought you did a great job. So, so Those I've, are very I've, nice guns. Well, gee, thanks. I was totally, <laughs> totally joking. There are actual bodybuilders and people who spend a way more time than I do. <laughs> but I'm happy with my almost muscular physique. <laughs> uh, the uh, um, a lot of people have actually taught me in, di in different doctors' offices. You want to go in at about a 45 degree angle if you've got at least a one centimeter needle. But I never could get an explanation for why. You certainly don't want to be like a skin popper right under the skin. No. Um, but you're saying go straight in. Now I'm totally confused. Yeah, I mean, if the needle is really small, if you have a half inch needle, you have a lot more room to get under the skin. But if you're using an Got insulin it. syringe, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, so it's, just for people looking at this on YouTube, let's see if I can. So it can would, see that it would, it, that, that will most likely go all the way underneath the skin. One of the things that I found is after injecting a certain area over and over, there's um, kind of this little semi fascial layer that's in the dermis that will tint. Um, underneath the needle, if the needle's not really sharp, like you have to pass the needle through the rubber stopper on your bottle. And if somehow the needle isn't sharp enough to go all the way through, there's a little tinting that happens. And I looked at this under ultrasound because I was fascinated by, oh, cool. <laughs> by you know, people that, that swore they were getting these little, you know, welts or something from their injection site. And they just weren't popping the needle all the way through that little layer that sits in the bottom of the dermis. And, um, and, some, you know, we're all made a little bit differently. Some people really, they just need to get it all the way through. And if you're at an angle, it makes it easier to get it into the dermis rather than in the subcutaneous tissue, which is where it really belongs. How many of your patients have a hard time injecting themselves? Many. It, many. Is it just the first time or is yes. it every time? It's usually the first time. And, and some, I mean, I've actually had patients who were great candidates for certain peptides and they just... They really wanted them, and they just said, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do it. I've had patients who want to come in and see me and have somebody in my office inject them regularly. 
it it's so funny that that first time it is a serious it screws with your mind yes it, it, like everything you've ever known is don't allow things past your skin barrier and your body knows this you I mean every animal knows this like nobody wants to a puncture wound right right uh, and overcoming that voice in your head is crazy well even even physicians when I'm training physicians that you know they get a little willy about injecting themselves so I demo just like what you did I do that on right in front of all my students I you know just find an area I show them how simple it is and I do it in front of my patients too when they're when they're a little uncomfortable I don't think I can inject myself I drop some saline um, and I just inject myself right in front of them and show them how easy it is. And it seems to take the boogeyman out of it. It's really not a big deal. But yeah, the first time you just have to get past that. And it doesn't hurt with an insulin syringe. It's like you can't even feel it half the time. It's so trivial. But man, it's it's that story in your head that I'm going to die. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about another just awesome peptide. Um, and one, I actually mixed up a fresh vial this morning uh, for my wife because she ate something and it gave her a little bit of gastritis. Can you guess which peptide I'm talking about? Are you talking about BPC-157? How did you know that, oh, Dr. Heather? I think that's probably my favorite. Next to epithalon, that is probably my favorite peptide. It is unbelievable. I, I, and the Croatians, you know, were the ones who did all, so much research on BPC-157, and, and, and we, we benefited from that. And I'm pretty sure that the Croatians really feel that all you really need to survive is food, water, and BPC-157. <laughs> well, I think I'll pull some of that into my next vial because I have a little bit of tendonitis I've been working on, so I'll stick that in my other arm. Absolutely. It is <laughs> It is just a phenomenal peptide. It, it's a body protective compound. It's isolated from human gastric juice, and it brings the body into homeostasis. So if you're too high on one thing, it brings you back down. If you're too low on something else, it brings you up. And it's incredibly powerful at healing tissue, healing connective tissue, even healing other kinds of tissue. We use it for cognitive. We use it for... Um, Do you put it in the brain, like no, spinal no, no. fluid? No, no, I don't put it in anything like that. You want to stick your own spinal fluid? That's, you know... I stick all sorts of stuff in my spinal fluid. It's like, <laughs> it, what are you doing on weekends? <laughs> But it's but you know it is using it systemically. It 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 does really really well for inflammation every place in the body. That is my right. favorite peptide to use for pain. Absolutely, it's good for pain. And it was originally for gastric healing is where we discovered yes. it. So you can it's one of the oral actives. I literally said Lana, drink this. Mm -hmm. We didn't even have to inject her. And it's systemically active that way. But for healing Crohn's disease, healing all kinds of stuff. Yes. But in my case, all right. I can go below the elbow where my tendonitis is, or I can go above the elbow. Just stick it right um, in. Just, just like right up there. Stick it where or it down hurts. there. Just stick. No it. one's ever told me. Stick anyway, it where it hurts. Where does it? Where it hurts. Post? All right, I'm gonna do it like right there. There you go. Okay. Now this should be a painful zone. It is a tiny needle. It's like a human hair. I'm just gonna wiggle it in a little bit. You see that? If you can, if you just don't pass out, if you want to needle people. So now <laughs> it's in there. I did 45 degrees again because I'm a bad person. <laughs> Ow! Okay, injecting this stuff hurts just because of the pressure, right? Because there's not a lot of fat right there. Correct. Okay, that is hurting a hell of a lot because it's right near the nerve. You ah! could reposition your needle. It, I it, could reposition my needle, yeah. but that would suck. That means just wiggle it around. Yeah, just reposition it away from that structure that it's not happy. Is that better? A little bit. I got half of it in. This is actually the most painful time I've ever done it. Yeah, you but, might just be a little too close to something that doesn't like that, or the, the needle itself may be near something. But but BPC is 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 just incredible, and um, it is one of the few peptides we can take orally, and it actually was shown to reverse non you know like NSAIDs, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, the mm -hmm. havoc they can wreak on the GI system. It can reverse that damage. Oh, that's cool because when people take that baby aspirin every day, which is like the worst anti aging advice ever. Um, it shreds their gut after a while, so maybe they should stop doing that and start doing some BPC. 